Hi, I'm Lynette and welcome. Today I'm going to be showing you an eyeshadow tutorial on this look right here. Created using the Makeup by Yolando Jamrock palette. So today I decided to use one of the palettes, another one of the palettes from my birthday haul. <laughs> and this one is the Playing in Makeup by Yolando, the Jamrock No Limitations palette. And now this is a palette that I had been lusting after for quite some time. I finally caught it on sale and took the plunge and this is what she looks like. She's got a big old mirror. And bam, those are the colors. Aren't they beautiful? This is a 30 color eyeshadow palette and it is made up of an assortment of shimmer metallics and mattes. And it seems like there may be a, a, a couple of different shimmer metallic formulas in this palette because just by looking at them, this is uh, a shimmer but it looks way different than this shimmer here and this shimmer right here and then you have your mattes this to me it screams fall although there are some colors in here that you could certainly use for spring and summer like these oranges beautiful oranges and reds and purples but then you have like this dark what i like to call the grungy side you've got this nice like dirty um lime green matte shadow and then you have these grungy browns and greens and really an year-round eyeshadow palette so i've always liked the color story of this palette it retails for i believe it's fifty dollars and you can find it on um makeup by yolando's website i think you can also buy these palettes from amazon but don't hold me to it. <laughs> so this actually is not my first time using this palette. Oh, let me just do a couple of swatches. I'm not gonna swatch the whole palette for you because it's 30 eyeshadows. So I'm just gonna swatch um, a couple for you. So I'm gonna swatch these amazing, these metallics right here that are absolutely amazing. And then a couple of the uh, mattes so you can get an idea of what these look like now these oh, look at that look at that that's the one i'm wearing on my lid right now today this beautiful deep dark plum brown shade it's, it's more brown but it looks like it's got maybe a little red in it a little plum in it and then that grungy green shadow now these two metallic shades are a lot look a lot more foiled and a lot more textured than the other metallics in this palette so let me just swatch um, a couple of the other metallics so this one right here and this one this green right here and then um another matte this beautiful orange matte right here and oh okay <laughs> i guess i'll swatch them down here so those are some of the shadows in this palette and not all of the match mats swatch well um, not all of them pick up well on the finger um, so it seems like there's a lot there may be a lot of different formulas or a few different formulas in this palette and this is like I said my second time using the palette so after the tutorial um, I will come back and give you my early impressions because it's not my first impression I'll give you my early impressions about what I think about 
the eyeshadows I've used thus far in this palette. So if you're interested in that, please stick around. And in the meantime, if you would like to see how I created this look today using the Jam Rock No Limitations palette by Makeup Playing in Playing in Makeup by Yolanda, then keep on watching. Starting off today's look with the P. Louise base in the shade Rumor 5, which is really my skin tone shade. And today I used a little bit more and I tried not to blend it out into such a thin layer. I wanted to keep a lot of the pigmentation to try to blink out my skin from my crease to the brow bone. So I started to pat it in so that I wouldn't blend it out too much. Going into the palette and I'm taking the shade Suzy on a big fluffy and uh, natural hairbrush and I'm going to pat that to set that, um, that base down. Now I'm going in with Sadie and this is a pretty warm orange matte shadow and I'm going to place that in the inner quarter of my crease and I'm going to go back into the palette several times to build up this color and to make sure I don't have any gaps in it that there's no patches and as you can see it's nicely pigmented I was hoping it was going to be a little brighter like a little more like it looks in the palette in the pan but uh, it probably would have if I had used a white base as opposed to a flesh tone base. But it does have good pigmentation and it blends out very nicely. And just continuing to pack it on, build up the color, and then blend it. Now going in with Laureth and a bigger fluffy crease brush. And I'm going to place that on the outer half. I guess of my crease and again pigmented matte shade that blends out really nicely and I went back into the palette a second time to build up the, uh, the color but as you can see the pigmentation on the very first go around was really nice and I could have really left it like that if I wanted to but I wanted to build it up and make it a little more rich so making sure I blend those two shades together where they meet. Now I'm taking Nancy and I wasn't planning to use this shadow in my crease because I was using it on the lower lash line but I really just wanted to see what it looked like <laughs> so I put it in the crease and I'm using a smaller blending brush this is the Sonia G mini booster to put it right there in the crease I don't want to blend it up too high and it doesn't look that much different from Laureth that that's there in the upper crease but it does bring a little more plum a little more cranberry I should say and does deepen it up a little bit so I did you know get a little more dimension using this little darker shade but you could totally skip this now I'm going in with Dasa, and that's that rich, deep, dark, plum brown. A really like dark wine shade, but it does have some brown in it. And I'm going to pat that onto the outer V area. And I'm trying to concentrate it more on the lid and just in the crease. I don't want to take it too high. And again, lots of good pigmentation. I did go back and add a little bit more, but as you could see from the very first go around, it was pretty dark. Now I'm taking Becky, the star of the show. I don't like too many Beckys, but I love this Becky. <laughs> and she is a beautiful, so metallic. And I don't really like gold eyeshadows, but this gold is really really beautiful and i am using it dry and it's very textured in the pan almost flaky um and as you can see i'm not getting any fallout from this shadow and again this is being used dry which is pretty pretty impressive this formula is definitely different from the majority of the shimmer shades in the palette the rest of them are shimmers whereas this one is really a metallic now I decided to go ahead and wet it wet my brush and you know I, I don't see a big difference you let me know if you do but I see right here where it's a little more shiny a little more metallic s but um, not a huge difference so you could use this shadow wet or dry and you would still get a lot of boom <laughs> a lot of payoff 
And now I'm just going back in with that dark Dasa shade and I'm just gonna go be going back in with all the shadows I've used thus far because when you do all this placement of shadows and blending, you don't wanna lose any of the intensity of the shadows you used previously. So I'm just going back in with all of those shadows to just re-intensify them, make sure that I have some deep dark definition right here in this crease area because I like to have a lot of definition right there. And then back in with that orangey shade because I didn't want that to get lost in the sauce and making sure I blend it nicely. Don't want any patches or patchiness. And then back with Lorith and just blending out the crease, the auto part of the crease and making sure I blend it into that orangey shade because I want seamless blends between all my shadows. And then back in with Susie just to intensify my underbrow matte highlight and then just to uh, blend around the edges of those crease shades. And now I'm taking Dasa and uh, I was out of frame when I started it so <laughs> I put it on the outer area of the lower lash line and then this is I think this is uh say no not Sadie this is Nancy and yeah Nancy um, on the lower lash line and now this is Mel Cosmetics eyeliner in the shade Bloodshot which was perfect I mean it matched perfectly with the shadows on the lower lash line and now this is Becky once again and using it dry on a pencil brush because I didn't want it to be really really bright in the inner corner and it's beautiful and once again no fallout using it dry and this is the finished look. I use my House of Lashes Boudoir Light Lashes and my Inglot number 77 gel liner for the wing. Okay, that is the completed look. And I think the look came out really well. I mean, I do like how it turned out. I feel like I got a nice, rich fall autumn inspired look and this shade right here on the lid becky this is the really the one of the um really foiled metallic shades one of the two really foiled metallic eyeshadows in this palette and when i first swatched it i was like oh yes that's gotta go on my eyes and of all the shadows i've used thus far in this palette that is by far my favorite as you can see it had a lot of impact a lot of punch a lot of shine right uh right up front i did try it dry first and it gave a lot of good metallic shimmeriness <laughs> and then when I wet it it got a little more you know metallic-y um, but I didn't feel like a whole lot I feel like dry you got a lot of the impact out of it dry as you did um, wet so you can use that one either way and I think you're gonna get a lot of bang for your buck now uh, the first look that I did use in this palette I posted it on Instagram and I used the blues and the greens and I have to say the first time I used the palette in, in using those so I used I believe I used this blue shimmer and I used this green one and I used some of the green mattes and I was oh and I also used this other really metallic one that's similar it seems to this one this one is Simone I used that um, in the inner corner and I really I felt a little I felt a lot actually disappointed by the shimmers by these shimmers right here they swatch nicely but even in the swatch they swatch kind of thin and then when I use them on my eyelids I use them dry I use them wet and they were just like mm, they were okay you definitely don't get the same impact with these eyeshadow shimmer metallics that you do with this one but I can tell they're of a different formula so I mean I it was a nice look I created a nice look with it um, but you know in working with them I, I don't know I just 
expected a little bit more and that might be because I came into using this palette with very high expectations because a lot of people love this palette and in particular and they love the palettes from this brand playing in makeup by Yolando so I guess maybe I went in with really really high expectations and this owner also purports that her eyeshadows are the most pigmented in the world I believe she's got some kind of saying like that I think it's actually the same saying that Juvia's Place has so I don't know we might have to do a battle between the <laughs> what this palette and what are the Juvia's Place palettes since they both seem to be making the same claims but um, but the mattes I had no problems with and in today's tutorial today's look I had no problems with the mattes I really was hoping that this Sadie shade this beautiful orangey shade would be a little brighter um, it did show up even with a flesh tone base that I used, the P. Louise base that I used. So it did show up. Um, it did build up to a point. And yeah, I mean, it worked nicely. I was just expecting it from seeing it in the pan. I was expecting it to be a little brighter, a little more vibrant, um, a little richer perhaps on the eye. And the mattes worked beautifully. Um, they were pigmented. They blended really nicely, really easily. And then um, on, the, on the lid and on the lower lash line, no problems with it. This shade right here, Becky, I used it wet and then I used it dry and then wet on the lid. But then I used it dry as my inner corner highlight and did not have any fallout. And it looks very textured and even flaky um, in, the pa in the pan, but had absolutely no fallout with this palette from any of the eyeshadows. Some of the mattes feel a little drier than the other mattes. They feel, some feel really, really smooth, like this one that I used on the outer corner, this um, Dasa. Uh, feel smooth, but others feel a little more dry, and that just may be due to the colors, purples, usually tend to feel a lot drier than other matte eyeshadow colors that I've experienced in palettes. You've got this one, Pamela, here that has this like marble look to it, but when you swatch it, it's, you know, it's a pretty shade, but it's not like special or anything. I mean, it's really, really pretty, but I don't know that you're getting, you know, any type of different look from it with that marble look that it has in the pan but it's a pretty shade but then again you know very soft but seems kind of on the thin side when it comes to shimmer formula so um i really enjoyed working with all of the shadows that i used today in this eye look didn't really love the shimmer shades from the first eye look the, those blues and greens um but the matte shades perform consistently well. At this point, I really can't say anything bad about it. Right now, I like it. If you have this palette or if you have other palettes from this brand, please let me know in the comments below what you think. I do plan on using this some more, especially since I feel like it's a fall appropriate palette. Um, there are some more combinations in here that I would like to dig into. Let me know also if you'd be interested in seeing any more looks with this palette and I will get that to you. If you like this video then please give it a like and consider subscribing because I do eyeshadow tutorials, makeup hauls, swatches, and reviews here every Saturday. I want to thank you for joining me today. I hope to see you again next week. Until then, bye bye.